we have a restaurant that is um, worried about how much money it's going to make tonight. Um, it has done some studies and it's found that its customers spend an average of $30 uh, per customer, but uh, they have a standard deviation of $10, which means maybe if somebody just has an appetizer and a drink, maybe they only spend $20. Maybe if they really go uh, full, uh, go for the full menu and, and have drinks and dessert and uh, a few different extras, then they're going to end up spending $40 or even more. So uh, the restaurant, their average is $30, and they have 25 reservations tonight. And I guess it's a reservation-only restaurant. You can't just walk in here. You have to have a reservation. So they're expecting 25 customers tonight. They want to know the chance that their total revenue tonight, uh, we're not worried about profit, we're not worried about what we're spending on supplies, total revenue will be between $725 and $800. So let me show you how this turns into a central limit theorem problem because it's not totally obvious right now. We're talking about total revenue, but let me show you here. Let me remind you of what we were given at the beginning of this lecture. So we were given that... Um, y bar, a sample mean, minus mu, the global mean, uh, divided by sigma, the standard deviation, and multiplied by square root of n. <laughs> a lot of uh, terms there. Uh, n is the uh, size of the sample. Uh, the point of that was that that would give you a standard normal variable. So we're going to call it z, and that's a standard normal variable. And in turn, the point of a standard normal variable is that it's very easy to calculate probabilities. The way I'm doing it is I'm using charts. Uh, you might use charts for your class, or you might have more sophisticated electronic tools, and that's okay with me. Um, but what does this have to do with this restaurant? Well, they want to make between $725 and $800 total. So if the total is going to be between 725. I guess they, I said they want to make between that. Of course, they'd be happy if they made more, but they're worried about the, they want to calculate how likely is it that we'll make between 725 and 800 total. Um, what we have here is a result that has to do with the mean, the sample mean. So how do we convert that into a mean? Well, we just divide by the customers, the number of customers, and, um, convert that into an average amount that each customer would spend. So the mean, the average, y bar would have to be between 725 divided by, how many customers were there? 25 and 800 over 25 because that's how much the average customer would have to spend in order to get the total between 725 and 800. And I just did a little arithmetic here. I rigged this up to, so that it, uh, the numbers came out fairly nicely. 800 over 25 is 32. And 725 over 25, uh, 700 over 25 is 28. So 725 over 25 is 29. So Y bar would have to be between uh, 29 and 32. What that means is uh, all the customers that come in tonight, they would have to spend an average of between $29 and $32. Doesn't mean they all have to spend between that, but it means, so you could still have some big spenders who come in and drop 50 bucks on a meal. Could still have some cheapskates who uh, just buy an appetizer and then slink out of there after spending $10. But on average, it has to come out between $29 and $32 per customer for tonight's, uh, tonight's customers. So, what I'd like to do is kind of build up that standard normal variable. So y bar minus mu would be between, well, my mu is my global average. So that's right there. That's the 30. That's how much uh, customers spend on the average in the long term. So that's uh, 29 minus 30 and 32 minus 30. And let me go ahead and divide by sigma. Divide all of these by sigma. Now, my sigma is the standard deviation. Oh, there it is. It's $10 right there. $10. $10. 
And I also need to multiply by the square root of n, and I didn't really leave myself enough space to do that, so I'll give myself another line there. y bar minus mu over sigma times the square root of n. This is not absolute value. This is not one of those within problems like the previous one. So I have to be careful about what's positive, what's negative. No absolute values here. So square root of n. Oh, n is 25. That's the number of customers we're going to be working with tonight. So the square root of n is 5. 5 times 29 minus 30 over 10. And 5 times 32 minus 30 over 10. And that actually simplifies fairly nicely. 5 over 10 is 1 half. Uh, 1 half times negative 1 is negative 1 half. So negative, I'll, just, I'll write that as negative 0 0.5. And then the point of this was we were building up a standard normal variable. So that's my z right there. This is between negative 0.5 and now 5 over 10 is still 1 half. 32 minus 30 is 2. So 2 times 1 half is just 1.0. 1.0. And so now I have a standard normal variable and I want to find the probability that it's between negative one half and positive one. Let me draw the graph of what I'm looking for. Possibly if you have the right electronic tool you can uh, jump to the answer at this point. Just drop these numbers in your electronic tool. But uh, let me show you how you can figure out using our charts. So there's negative 0.5 and there's one. 1.0, and I want to find the probability of being in between those two. And what my chart will do is it'll tell me the probability of being in a tail. So it'll tell me that probability right there. Um, it'll also tell me that probability right there, but those are not the same because uh, 0.5 and 1.0 are, are not symmetric. So this is the probability that z is greater than 1.0. Um, this is the probability that z is less than negative 0.5, but that's also the same as z being bigger than 0.5. And so what I really want here is my probability that z is between negative 0.5, 0.5, and um, 1.0. Let me write that a little more clearly. Negative 0.5. And one and 1.0, but what I can do is I can subtract off the two tails to get that probability. So that's one minus the probability that z is bigger than 0.5 minus the probability that z is bigger than 1.0. We had some other problems that were kind of like this, where we subtracted off the two tails, and those were symmetric ones. They started out with absolute values, and so we could just find one tail and then multiply it by two. But these tails are not symmetric, so I'm going to have to do two separate uh, calculations and uh, look up two separate numbers on a chart there. Um, let me say that I will do these steps on the chart on the next page. And I'll just tell you what the answers are for now, and then I'll, I'll prove them to you by showing you the chart on the next page. So probability that z is bigger than 0 0.5. I looked that up on my chart. I got uh, 0.3085. Probability of z is bigger than 1.0 was um, 0.1587. And so now it's just 1 minus 0 0.3085, 0 0.1587. I was lazy. I threw that into a calculator. And what I got was... Uh, 0.5328, could have done that by hand, that wouldn't have been that bad. Um, and if you wanted to estimate that, that would be just 53%. So that's the probability that this restaurant is going to, uh, their total profit for tonight is between $725 and $800 tonight. Uh, so there is that one missing step from the chart. We'll uh, confirm that on the next slide. But before I turn the page from this slide, let me show you the steps here. I wanted to find the probability that my total was between 725 and 800. Now, what I really know is a result about the average that each customer tonight is going to spend. So I wanted to convert that total 
uh, into an average. And so I just divided it by the number of customers. So the total uh, divided by the number of customers gives me the average. And 725 over 25 gives me 29. 800 over 25 gives me 32. Uh, and then I started to build up this uh, formula for a standard normal variable. So I subtracted mu from both sides. That mu, where did it go? Oh, that was the average that uh, all the customers in the world spend at this restaurant. So I subtracted 30 from uh, both sides. And then I divided by sigma. Where's my sigma? Oh, there's my sigma right there, the standard deviation. So I divided by sigma. And then I multiplied by the square root of n on the next line. n is the number of customers. There's 25 of them. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. And because 5 is the square root of 25. And then I simplified the numbers here. They worked out pretty nicely. They were rigged up to work nicely. Um, simplify down to negative 0.5 and positive 1.0. So I'm really looking for the probability between negative 0.5 and 1.0 uh, for a standard normal variable. Now, the way my chart works, and some people's charts work a little differently, but the way my chart works is it'll tell you these tail probabilities. Um, and then, well, it tells you the positive tails, but you can work out the negative tails the same way. So what I'll do is I will look up the two different tails there and subtract them off from one, and that'll give me this probability in the middle that I'm really looking for. Um, I'll confirm those on the next page with the chart. It's 0 0.3085 and 0 0.1587. And once I look those up, I can drop them back into the calculation and just reduce it down to 0 0.5328, which is about 53%. So that's my probability that my restaurant is going to make between $725 and $800 tonight. So the one missing piece of the puzzle from the previous slide, we're still answering example uh, five now, um, is to find those two probabilities. So we were finding the probabilities of being less than negative uh, 0.5 or being bigger than 1.0. Uh, we actually wanted to find the probability of being between those cutoffs, but uh, this chart will tell you the probability of being in the tails. So the probability of z being less than negative 0.5 is the same as being bigger than 0.5. And it should be in this chart somewhere. Here it is, 0.5 and 0 0.00 is 0 0.3085. 0 0.3085. And the probability of z being bigger than 1, 1.0, uh, here's 1.0, and it's 0 0.1587, 0 0.1587. And so uh, I took those numbers, and I don't think I'm going to rehash all the calculations that I did on the previous slide, but uh, I'll just say, you plug those numbers into the appropriate place on the previous slide, and you can go back and watch it if you don't remember how it works out. That would be good if I could spell previous, though. Uh, previous slide. And we worked through some calculations, and we came up with a 53% probability that this uh, restaurant is going to make between $725 and $800 in their... Uh, nightly revenue. So uh, that wraps up example five. Um, everything here, well, most of the work was done on the previous slide. You can go back and check it out. Just the two, the missing step on the previous slide was where these two numbers came from, the 0 0.3085 and the 0.1587. And uh, the way where they came from was by looking up 0 0.5 and 1.0 and then getting these two numbers from my standard normal chart. If you don't like using charts, if you have an electronic uh, way of getting probabilities for a standard normal distribution, then by all means uh, use that. Uh, it's uh, definitely something quicker than this uh, slightly archaic method. But uh, some probability classes, they are still using charts, so I wanted to show you that way. Uh, so that wraps up this lecture on the central limit theorem, and that's the last lecture in the probability series here on educator.com. 
My name is Will Murray. I've really enjoyed uh, making these lectures, and I hope you've learned something about probability. I hope you've been working through the examples and uh, learning something along with me. I want to thank you very much for sticking with me through these probability lectures, and I hope you're enjoying your probability class and uh, all your math classes. Bye-bye now.